Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the team of the year. We're moving on to our centre backs, our goalkeeper so far, Alan Manis, our left back, Anto Breslin, and our right back is Ronan Finn. So we need two centre backs to partner in between those players. So, Gary, um, I suppose we have a lot of centre backs to go through. So, kind of give me your run of events and who you would like then, lastly, to uh, be the duo that you're going to select. Okay, so I, I, I came down to five for me, but I'll go with a couple of honourable mentions before that. Uh, one was Dan Cleary, Daniel Cleary of Dundalk, who, who, and another who probably had a bad start to the season but came back very well was Brian Gartland of Dundalk. I think he did well, particularly in Europe for them at the, the second. But uh, the five for me to pick the, the duo from... Uh, Dan Casey of Bohemians, he really impressed me. A good young player came back from Cork and, and did really well for them. Four I mentioned were, uh, and I consider, are the four centre backs that played as part of a back three with Shamrock Rovers, um, because all four of them have really impressed me. And all four of them played with substitutions and injuries and everything in something like 15, 16, 17 games of the season. And the four of them would be Liam Scales, Joey O'Brien, Lee Grace and Pico Lopez. And uh, I think if you pick any two from those five, I think you will end up with, a, with an excellent uh, centre-back pairing. And it, I'll start so with the, the automatic choice. For me, Pico Lopez is the number one of those five and has to make the pairing. I think he's been superb for Shamrock Rovers, uh, not just in the league, in, in Europe as well, and, and scoring goals. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, particularly, um, I know he loves a European goal, as they say down in Tala. But um, Pico Lopez, for me, was the standout um, centre-back. And I've probably gone a little bit betwixt and between to who to partner him, with him. But I'm actually going to go for Joey O'Brien because I think Joey O'Brien has had a really, really good season with Shamrock Rovers. And uh, I, I, I've, I've been players have come back to the league and I don't think as many have come back and really, really impressed as much as Joey has with his... And it's probably tough on someone like Lee Grace and Liam Scales, who I think is going to be a superb player and he's still learning his trade. But what a player to learn from and... So for me, and I'm going to go with the the Shamrock Rovers duo, and that's Pico Lopez without a doubt, and Joey O'Brien shades it as his partner centre back. Oh, uh, Jared, do you want to go and give us a rundown of uh, your top picks, and if you have any honourable mentions, feel free to mention. Yeah, I'm going to be a bit kinder for my centre backs and my right backs, and I actually will give a few honourable mentions. Uh, Rob Cornwell at Bowes, I think he deserves that. Very dominant. Nearing in the air, he's a great threat for them from corners. He was unlucky, he actually didn't get a couple of goals, hit the frame of the goal a couple of times. And it was good to see him come back before the end of the season because I remember being at the court game and he went off with a serious inj looking injury that night. So it was great to see him come back for the last couple of league matches. Uh, Owen Toll at Derry, I thought he was probably one of their standout players in what was a, a disappointing season for them. And Kyle Callan McFadden, someone who I thought was really starting to establish himself as a real leader at Sligo Rovers, but unfortunately for the Westerners, He's actually now left the club uh, since the end of the season. But I think they deserve honourable mentions. Again, similar to Gary, like I think you could pick any of the four that played predominantly for Shamrock Rovers. Uh, similar to him, uh, Roberto Lopez was probably my first name on the team sheet for centre-backs. Only missed two uh, games this season. 11 clean sheets was in the side. Three goals in the league, plus that goal in Europe. Played the full 90 minutes in, I think, 13 or 14 league matches this season. Got the winner in a game against Derry, I think, in their second game back after the restart. In a game that looked like they were going to be losing for long stages, a crucial victory up in the uh, Ryan McBride Brandywell Stadium. He's improved a lot, looks so, so good and comfortable on the ball. And he's obviously, as I mentioned, is on my team sheet. And I'm going to go with Lee Grace beside him. I'm picking him over Joey O'Brien and Liam Scales just because he's played more games. And that's the reason why I picked these two lads. He's only missed one game this season. 12 clean sheets in the side, one goal. Great engine on him as well. He, he can last the full 90 minutes. I think he's played the full 90 minutes in 15 of the uh, 18 league games this season. So that's some goal. Joey O'Brien and uh, Liam Scales, when they came in this season, were excellent. But I've picked Roberto Lopez and Lee Grace just because they've played more games this season. And I think that's what you have to pick on who's had the more longevity this season. 
So my centre back pairing is Roberto Lopez and Lee Grace from Shamrock Rovers. Okay, um, Paul. Then we will go with you, and then I'll give mine. Yep. So the honourable mentions would be Dan Casey and Dan Cleary. I think they both had very good seasons and were consistent throughout. Uh, for me, just missing out in fourth and third, I'd have Joey O'Brien and Liam Scales. Joey O'Brien, experienced, very, very good player and is using his experience on the rest of that Rover side, clearly. Liam Scales, young and up-and-coming talent, very, very good, unlucky to miss out. But for me, it has to be Pico Lopez and Lee Grace. Firstly, Roberto Lopez, you look at the games he's played in, the goals he's got. He got man of the match against Bowles, the game I was at. He got man of the match against Shells as well. He's been fantastic and he's really helped to bring Rovers onto another level. Lee Grace, he played, he only missed one game this season. And I have a sat here saying he got no yellow or red card. So discipline is fantastic with him. And that's what you need with your defenders a lot of the time. They need to stay solid and keep keep playing in the game. So for me, Lee Grace and Roberto Lopez. Yeah, well, look, for me, it's going to, I just think those two together are a fantastic partnership. And I spoke about Alamanis earlier on. If you put all those things together, you know, Pico Lopez, Lee Grace, and Manis together, uh, along with Ron and Finn, and whoever plays left wing back, which obviously they play a different formation, you know that you're going to get a solid team. The two of them, like, since they've come in as a duo, you know, it's no surprise. But, where Rovers are where they are since they've kind of come in together and how much they've grown together. I mean, Pico Lopez is up for player of the year. That's how well he's done. He's gone on to be a Capa Verde international. Um, he gets called up all the time for them now. And I think that's brought up his levels as well. He was really good against Ace Milan in Europe. Obviously, Jerry mentioned the crucial goal he scored against Derry up there. And he does pop up for crucial goals all the time. Lee Grace, Rolls Royce of his centre-back. And again, you know, I, I think uh, you, when you mentioned there about the disciplinary record, I mean, Joey O'Brien has a tendency to get sent off and that would be my only worry. In terms of what he brings to that over team and in terms of a, a dressing room presence, I think Joey O'Brien's fantastic and I have to echo what Gary said about players coming back to the league and don't tend to always hit the ground running or always do too well. I mean, you look at Delaney when he came back to Cork, he wasn't that good. Whereas you look at O'Brien, he's came in, I think he's been there three seasons. They won the the cup last year, as I mentioned a few times already, and then they won the league now this year since he's been in. So it's clear and it shows how much of a leader he is and how well thought of he is within the players in the dressing room there as well. And they have a, a, a numerous leaders. I think honourable mentions, Robbie McCourt at Waterford playing centre-back as well. I don't think that's his natural position. We spoke about Dan Casey, Rob Cornwell, James Finner, he didn't play enough games. But... um. And, and McCourt then as well. So that, I mean, you have to pick it a bunch with Lopez and Grace, but you, uh, I always feel like you have to have a partnership with centre backs. You also have to kind of have a yin and a yang, and I think you get a perfect partnership there with Lopez and Grace. Like that's for me. I think when you're looking at it, if you had a back four of Breslin, P, uh, Lopez, Grace, and and Finn with, with Manus and Goal. I mean, you wouldn't really be fearing anyone in the league with that team, I don't think, anyway. So, yeah, I think that's a um, pretty straightforward decision. I think Lee Grace is the only person missed out of Gary's list, and it's Lopez and Grace for, for everybody else. I'm, I think I'm correct in saying that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Just yeah. one thing as well, I just want to say as well about Joey O'Brien, just kind of including Zamba mentioned. I know this is something that you bring up a good bit, Paul, and you're kind of like, when we see likes of Dara Murphy and Damien Delaney, as they have the last couple of years, come home and play in the league. And you're kind of saying, like, yeah, it's great, but like they're going here for the sake of the tail ends of their career and to play. And it's not really to get excited about. You could tell with Joey O'Brien in the last three years, it's not just a case of him just kind of seeing out his career and just keep playing on for the sake of it. Like, you can really tell that he has kind of added to the league and what he's added to Shamrock Rovers. And he still actually really does have a good engine in him. And he still is, I think, I think he's still only like 33, 34. So he could definitely kind of play on like he genuinely did show play, choose to play with Channel Rovers for the sake of prolonging his career not maybe like we've seen other examples where players have just come for a year just for the sake of it he's also a Channel Rovers fan as well so the fact that he yeah. actually loves the club as well so I know people say oh we're a fan of the club and Robbie Keane is renowned for it uh, but 
we when you're talking to him or you hear him on podcasts, you know, he's been on the Tales of the East stand and they love him just because everything he says, Shamrock Rovers, and he's just such a winner. Even the, the quizzes they do, doing stuff like that, he hates losing and all that type of stuff. So they're the type of characters he wants around the dressing room. He's obviously played for Ireland, he played for Bolton and West Ham, a few other clubs. So he's obviously great to have around the team there. And I'm sure, you know, Shamrock Rovers, I love in life. But unfortunately for him, he doesn't get into this team. Well, if you're gone by me, Paul and Jer, but yeah, I'm sure you like Gary. I'm sure you won't like us, but <laughs> you'll have to just make deal with a spot on the bench. So uh, let us know your thoughts on centre backs of the year, and um, if you're someone different, let us know in the comments, as I'm sure you will. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to drop a subscribe, and then check out the rest of our series. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching.